I bet some of you are already thinking, well, here we go, a, a dose of modern psychology and all its meanderings. And yet both the Gospels and many of the greatest saints in the Church take and make exactly the same observations. For example, St. Augustine's prayed that he might know himself better in order that he might know and love God better. St. Teresa of Avila was much more emphatic. She declared that there is no way forward in the spiritual life until we learn to love ourselves. However, let's turn to the Gospels and look at what Jesus himself has to say. He teaches us that there is only one commandment, and that commandment is the commandment of love. He says you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind, and your neighbour as yourself. St Paul tells us that the whole of the law and the prophets is contained in this one simple commandment. In that commandment then, there are three elements. And there's love of God, there's love of neighbour, and there's love of self. And depending on how we view these elements and the relationships with one another, there will flow a spirituality or a way of living. So let's maybe first of all look at the model which puts love of God first, then love of neighbour next, and in the rear, love of self. That's one way of looking at them. And yet this model has very often led to a very distorted spirituality. It's looked to God as some sort of distant figure, way out there, remote, apart. And our neighbours, they become kind of stepping stones, allowing us to meet God, but using people. We do things for people, we do things to people, in order that we might become holy, in order that we might be able to stretch there and reach our God. And then the last and the least important of all in that viewpoint is ourselves. You know, we have no real value, no real needs. We can put up with anything for the love of God. In fact, when we take this model to its extreme, it often, it could and often did have some traumatic effects in people's lives. Because it told them that somehow or other they were of no value. That they were no more than a kind of cog in a wheel. That God was kind of remote, not involved, out there. And that people, that we were there to be used. And it often led to people feeling very alone afraid, angry, and hurt. In fact, I think perhaps the result of that theology or that perception can be seen when taken to its real extreme in the increasing number of suicides among young people in today's society. Why? Because they see themselves as useless, of no value, used. And if, if God even figures in their thinking, then he too is so remote that, you know, the thought pattern is he's useless, he's of no value. That's one way of looking at those three elements. Let's now try and look at St. Bernard of Clairvaux's insight into the relation of the three elements. Love of self, love of God, and love of neighbour. Bernard says that love of self is our introduction into the spiritual life. It's only once we have interiorized and made our own the unconditional love that God has for us that we begin our journey. We recognize the beauty and the esteem that's ours. And that in turn allows us to stretch out, to recognize the goodness and the beauty in other people. And so becomes our love of our neighbor. And that in its turn, becomes the very expression of our love of God. Remember again our Lord's words, whatever you do to the least of my brothers or sisters, you do unto me. Can we just clear up one thing immediately? What do we mean by talking of love of self? 
Well, it certainly doesn't mean that, you know, I think I'm chocolate. You know, that I think I'm the bee's knees and that everything's going to revolve around me. It's simply accepting the truth that God made me, that God made you, that when he made you, when he made me, he made somebody who was beautiful and unique. You know, God doesn't make rubbish. God only makes beautiful things. And he made you, and he made me. Sure, I've got my weaknesses. I sin, I make mistakes, I muck things up. But that doesn't cancel, that doesn't scrub the basic fundamental truth that we were each made in the image and likeness of God. I'd like to return to that just a wee bit later on. But let's see if, if for a moment we can agree that the love of self does come first and then that it in turn leads to a stretching out to love of neighbour and ultimately can become the very expression of the love of God. Where does that love of self come from? Let's look at it in terms of, say, a child growing up. When a child is born, it's the fact that it's loved, its sense of value, its sense of importance, is that something that's self-conferred or is it communicated? Surely it's communicated. And in the first instance, it's communicated to that child through its parents. It's interesting, you know, for a child, the most important way that it does in fact learn of its value realise that it's loved is through the, ten, the, the sense of touch. And in fact, if that sense of touch abuses the child, or if it's not forthcoming, it can have an absolutely devastating effect on the child as it grows up. In fact, we know that if a child is never touched, then, you know, it can cause it real damage. So touch is a very powerful way of communicating to somebody, especially to the child, its sense of worth or sense of value. 